Hello friends! If you are new, welcome to my channel. Why don't you go down, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any episodes. For my fans and subscribers, welcome back. I really, really do appreciate you. Today's topic, Origins of Satan. Gospel of Luke, Part 2. Not much else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. Before I start, I just want to note that Pilate was a very cruel man and had no problem whatsoever in sentencing people to death. So this story makes absolutely no sense. So when I left off in part one, the author wrote that Pilate sent him to Herod, as well as writing that it was Herod's soldiers, not Pilate's, who had beat and mocked Jesus. Then Herod sent Jesus back to Pilate. Pilate then decides to get everyone, the chief priests, rulers, and the people who had previously protected Jesus, together. Again, Pilate declares Jesus innocent, but the Jews unanimously protested. According to the author, Pilate repeats this two more times. Luke mentions a centurion along with saying that there was a plaque saying King of the Jews and the charges of sedition leads us to conclude that ultimately the Romans passed a sentence and executed him. That and the fact that Roman that crucifixion was a Roman punishment, not a Jewish one. The author of Luke changes many of the details of the death scene in Mark. For instance, in this account, he prays for those carrying out the sentence. Mark writes that even the other two criminals joined in ridiculing him, but Luke tells us that one of the criminals asked Jesus to remember him when he came into paradise. Again, Luke emphasizes Jesus' innocence, one that even a criminal, a criminal could see. By doing so, he shows that even a dying Jesus had the power to forgive and redeem. Luke replaces the recitation of Psalm 22, 1 with Psalm 31, 5. Just for your information, Psalm 22, 1 states, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? While Psalm 31, 5 says, Lord, to thy hands I commit my spirit. With this action, the author of Luke dismisses a scene of agony while replacing it with a scene of trust in God. Luke reports that many of the crowd repented and that the centurion present praised God and said, quote, surely this man was innocent, end quote. In the book of Acts, supposedly also written by the author of Luke, he condemns the Jews, not the Romans. Peter specifies the, quote, men of Israel, accusing them of crucifying the one God had sent. You may be forgiven for thinking Pilate was not a cruel man if he only read the Bible and not history. The fact of the matter is that nobody got anywhere in Roman politics without being cruel, and Pilate would not have hesitated to put Jesus to death. However, Luke intends to show that all who reject Jesus accomplish Satan's goals in this life. The author of John perhaps wrote a decade after Luke, 
Scholars think that he was a Jewish convert to the Jesus movement, which might explain the bitterness with which he spoke of the Jewish majority. The author of John writes that Jesus said to the other Jews, you are, you are of your father the devil. Although most scholars agree that Jesus most likely never made this accusation. These words probably reflected hostilities between the group of Christians to which John belonged and the Jews. The author of John was probably most bitter toward the Jewish majority because the Christians had been expelled from the synagogues. We don't know what happened, but supposedly John tells us elsewhere that anyone who claimed Jesus was Messiah was put out of his home synagogue. This event shaped how John and his group saw themselves as hated by the world and who in turn urged members to reject the Jewish world into which they had been born. John chooses to tell the story of Jesus as one of cosmic conflict between light and darkness, between Jesus' followers and the opposition they experience from the world. Since it was written, this gospel has comforted those believers in the oppressed minority. He intentionally starts his gospel in the beginning Echoing Genesis, when God divides the light from darkness, he identifies the Logos, or the Word, with light and life. His is a story of triumph, for the light came in the form of Jesus, and the darkness could not overcome it. John takes these primordial elements, light and darkness, assigns human players for these cosmic forces and interprets them in social and religious terms. Accordingly, this divine light is the spiritual ancestor of all who will become the children of God. The death and supposed resurrection of Jesus by the end of the book achieved in society what God had attained cosmologically in the beginning, the separation from the sons of light from those of darkness. Having framed his story in this light, John then brings it into the realm of humanity. Because of the way he casts the story, John does not picture Satan as a disembodied being as in the other Gospels, John never portrays Satan as an independent being acting on his own. Rather, people play the tempter's role. John repeats the three temptations in Luke and Matthew, but Satan does not directly appear. Instead, people play Satan's role. Matthew and Luke report that Satan challenges Jesus to seize earthly power. According to John, the people try to make Jesus king by force. Matthew and Luke follow the Q source, stating that Satan wanted Jesus to prove his authority by turning stones to bread. However, John tells us that it is the people who witnessed his other miracles that wanted more proof of his identity as the Messiah. Matthew 4, 5 through 6, and Luke 4, 9 through 12, tell of the devil tempting Jesus to display his powers in public. In John, this temptation comes from Jesus' own brothers who did not believe in him. They challenged him to go to Jerusalem and show himself to the world. 
everyone present, including Jesus' brothers, knew that those at Jerusalem wanted to kill him. Just like Jesus rejected the temptation in Matthew and Luke, he also rejects this temptation. John writes that Jesus himself reveals who the devil is when Peter declares that all the disciples believe he is Messiah. Jesus answers that one of them is a devil, speaking of Judas Iscariot, John 6, 70-71. According to John, Judas Iscariot and the Roman and the Jewish soldiers were Jesus' supernatural enemies in human form. In John, Jesus says of Judas' arrival, the ruler of this world, also the evil one, is coming, 1430. Note that Judas is not some supernatural bad guy, but very human. Even though John tries to cast this in a light of good versus evil. Shortly before this, Jesus identifies the Jews who had previously believed in him as of your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. 844. For the first time, the cosmic force of dark or the devil is identified as Jesus' true enemy. The Greek word for the Jews is used in different ways in John. When Jesus denounces the Jews in chapter 8, he is not making an ethnic distinction since Jesus and his disciples were ethnically Jewish. Rather, in this passage, Jesus represents light and the Jews represent those who reject the light. I'm going to stop here for today, even though I haven't quite finished Satan in the Gospel of John, but I think you can see, as I can see, that this is actually the beginning of the term between seeing Satan as holy human and as a supernatural bad guy. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source that you see this episode. If you wish to support my channel, you may do so on my PayPal link. Also, if you would, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers the YouTube algorithm. I welcome constructive criticism, and if you have any requests, you may leave those down in the comments as well. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.